Oh yeah. Greetings, welcome to another Deckard Games YouTube thing. And today we have a um, modern thing, an RTX thing, because we are going to unbox and reveal this uh, guy, that being a uh, RTX 3070 from uh, ASUS, the uh, dual version because of uh, two fans and stuff. So uh, yeah, let's uh, take a quick look at this um, lovely box. It is uh, quite nice uh, and big. So uh, yeah, almost as nice and big as uh, Switch technology. If you're a tech-savvy kind of person, you can't go wrong with Switch technology in Lisboa. Switch technology has a lot of stores in different locations, great service and awesome prices. But most of all they have great customer care because they are passionate about computers, old and new. Please check the link below for more information. At the front of the box, ASUS lets you know that uh, it is the um, dual version of the RTX 3070 with the two fans and stuff, also the um, OC edition and we have some um, extra information about the uh, NVIDIA Ampere set of cards which is the new code name for the uh, 3000 series with some uh, sweet ray tracing and um, DLSS PCIe 4.0 the back of the box shows you some uh, pictures of the card itself with some uh, publicity information. Well, it features some uh, Axial Tech fan design, a protective backplate, which is um, cool, I believe. Dual BIOS, we have some uh, software and stuff. So um, yeah, we have uh, some uh, key features, second generation ray tracing, which stands out in video DLSS, obviously, and uh, that's pretty much it. The side of the box lets you know that it has some uh, subtle lightning. Also on the top, some uh, subtle lightning, or uh, as I like to call it, RGB for the part, because uh, if you want some uh, GPU with uh, Christmas themes, with the lights all over the place, you have to pay more but uh, who gives a crap about RGB? We are going to uh, unbox this guy and uh, take a look at it. And inside the box we have a um, another black box, love me some boxes with some nice um, texturized uh, feeling with the ASUS logo all over the place and the, in a golden finish we have the ASUS logo again in search of uh, incredible. So let's open this thing up and uh, well immediately we uh, get the card which is cool. So uh, yeah let's take this thing out of here and we have the card itself with some uh, instructions on how to uh, unpackage the thing because uh, well it is stuck in here as you can see <laughs> so yeah very well protected it is cool and we have a manual from uh, ASUS, the uh, Focus, there you are, the speed setup, because speed fixes everything. We have a little card from ASUS with uh, three stars, because why not, overclocking for uh, whatever, and uh, hit dissipation another for uh, something. Thank you, sure. Paper. And so here we have the card, uh, which stands on its own, which is cool, I guess, and some uh, unpackaging steps, because, uh, I don't know, because of ASUS, you know, unfold this, unfold that, do this and do that. Uh, I say, uh, sure, let's go through here. 
in the vest. And there we are. I say, uh, my way is way better than Asus way. So here we have the card itself. Let's put it to the side. Do we have anything else? What? We don't send you anything? No. Empty. Seriously? Yep. Thank you for that, Asus. Thank you very much. And here we have the card itself, our RTX by Asus with the um, dual fans. At the side we have the Asus logo and the, the GeForce RTX. I believe there is some RGB over here. Massive cooler. Two PCIe 8-pin connectors. At the back we have obviously our backplate. And we have some um, I.O with uh, HDMI and some uh, display ports, which is uh, cool. So, uh, yeah, it is all black, which is also cool. Black and uh, metal theme going on, which I like. And uh, the only thing left to do is to um, unpeel this stuff and uh, put it in a machine to run some games. Now testing will be made using my computer where we have a uh, Seasonic Focus 750 watt 80 plus platinum power supply. We have a Gigabyte X570 Aorus Elite. We are going to use the AMD Ryzen 7 3700X and some 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. As for the GPU, we already know that we are using the ASUS Dual RTX 3070 with some PCIe Express 4.0, 8GB of GDDR6, an OC clock of 1800 MHz and some 5888 CUDA cores. Time to start throwing some numbers at the screen, we're going to go game by game in a total of 8 and in each game 3 resolutions, 1080p, 1440p, which a lot of people are using, and 4K. Starting off with Battlefield 5 running with DirectX 12, ultra settings and ray tracing, at 1080p we get an average of 117 frames per second, with a minimum of 97 and 93 1% lows. Scale up to 1440p and the average drops to 84 frames per second, still very much playable, with a minimum of 65 and also 65 1% lows. At 4K, things start to go not so well. We get an average of 49 frames per second, with minimums and 1% lows going all over the place. Next is Borderlands 3, again a DirectX 12 game at ultra settings. At 1080p we get an average of 108 frames per second with a minimum and 100% lows like the graph shows, mainly because of me who forgot to restart the game after changing resolutions. 1440p gets an average of 82 frames per second with a minimum of 47 and 53 1% lows. Going 4K we get 47 frames per second on average with 41 1% lows. Next up is Control, quite the demanding game, with ultra settings, ray tracing and the LSS. At 1080p Control gets an average of 103 frames per second, with 46 1% lows, very playable at this resolution. At 1440p, average frames per second drop to 80, which is still playable, 
with 63.1% loads. Scaling up to 4K, average frames per second are cut in half, going to 44 with a minimum of 28 and 36.1% loads. Control wasn't very enjoyable at this resolution. Up next we have Death Stranding at Ultra Settings with great use of the LSS. At 1080p, Death Stranding gets an average of 134 frames per second with 48.1% lows. Going to 1440p, average frames per second went up to 145, which is weird, but these are the numbers. Going up to 4K, we get 104 frames per second on average with 83.1% lows. Death Stranding is playable in every resolution, as the numbers show. Next game is Doom Eternal running the Vulcan API at Ultra Nightmare settings. At 1080p, Doom gets an average of 300 frames per second, with 243 1% lows. Going up to 1440p, average frames per second drop to 183, with 136 1% lows. Going up again to 4K, Doom gets 96 frames per second on average and 73 1% lows. In case you haven't noticed, Doom Eternal runs smooth no matter what. In fact, Doom Eternal can run on a PC made uh, out of potatoes, because uh, Falcon. Up next we have GTA V, the first DirectX 12 on the list, running at ultra settings. 1080p gets an average of 181 frames per second. 1440p drops the average to 113 frames per second with 81 1% lows. 4K drops again to 63 frames per second, making GTA 5 a very playable game in all three resolutions. Next is Shadow of the Tomb Raider running at the highest settings. At 1080p we get 138 frames per second on average, with 87 1% lows. 1440p brings the average up, again like in Death Stranding, to 163 frames per second. At 4K the average drops to 81, with 55 1% lows. We also have 3D Mark and its Time Spy demo, getting at 1080p 138 frames per second in test 1 and 115 in test 2. Going up to 1440p, numbers drop to 90 and 77 frames per second. At 4K, numbers are cut in half with 44 and 41 frames per second. To sum things up, here we have a graphic with the average of all the games tested. Keep in mind that Doom Eternal and Death Stranding a little bit make these numbers go up because averages. At 1080p, the RTX 3070 got an average of 149 frames per second. At 1440p, the number drops just a little bit to 122 frames per second. Finally, at 4K, frames per second go down almost 50% to 59. Again, the numbers in Doom and Death Stranding make these go up. As for noise levels during the 3D Mark Time Spy demo, we got an average of 48 decibels, with a maximum of 67. The measurement was made with the case open and using the performance bias. Obviously that closing the case reduces the noise levels and, in my personal opinion, the card is overall pretty silent. So would I recommend the uh, RTX 3070 from uh, ASUS, in this case the uh, OC version? I would say yes, I would recommend this card if you can find one, because uh, I don't know what went through uh, Nvidia's mind, because uh, you can't find stock anywhere, don't, don't know what's happening with uh, Nvidia and uh, Samsung. Regardless, it is a um, $600 card, more or less, something like that, and uh, it is a pretty bang for uh, the buck 
GPU. If you intend to game at 4K only, it is not the best GPU out there, but again, $600. If you intend to game at 1080p or 1440p, it, it is a uh, pretty good card for those resolutions. Aesthetic-wise, it is a beautiful card, I don't know, it is very clean, very slick, with those um, black and um, metal colors. It is also pretty silent, it has that uh, smooth lightning on the side, uh, not through, uh, through RGB, but uh, who gives a crap about RGB? I'm not giving more money to have some uh, RGB on a GPU, I don't care about that. Again, pretty looking card, pretty silent and uh, pretty good performance. I really enjoyed working with this uh, GPU and gaming, obviously, but I really enjoyed making this uh, video, it is a pretty cool card, and I know you also enjoyed this video, so uh, leave it a thumbs up, because thumbs up are uh, cool, and uh, since you are there, don't forget to uh, subscribe to the channel, because your support is always and very very much appreciated, you can follow me on social media if you want to, no pressure, as always, Thank you very much for watching this thing that you just did, and until my next video, please do take care.